we're going to talk about a turbine. Turbine generally looks a little bit like this. The inlet is at a different height than an outlet. Usually there are some heat loss in a turbine. Of course, you you run a fluid through a turbine in order to turn the shaft of the turbine. So therefore there is work energy out of a turbine. We normally don't add any heat to a turbine. That would sort of be a silly thing to do. And we don't put any work into the turbine other than throw, uh, throwing this, this mass over it. So if energy is not created or destroyed, then I can start with a first law energy balance and say that the internal energy inside this system plus the heat that I put in, which that would be silly to add for a turbine, plus the work I put in, which would also be silly to add, so that's going to go to zero, plus the energy inherent in the mass that flowed in is equal to the internal energy that we're left with. Sorry, the internal energy that we're left with, plus some heat losses, plus the work of the turbine shaft. That's why we made a turbine in the first place. Um, plus the energy of the mass as it went out after it put some energy into work. So um, we know that in a, in, a, in, a, in a mass flow problem, the amount, the mass flow rate times the enthalpy of that substance plus the kinetic energy associated with the mass, right? the internal energy associated with the mass, the potential energy associated with the mass and the kinetic energy associated with those mass are all factors. But in this case of a turbine, there's the same number of kilograms, kilograms over time going in as there are coming out. There are the same mass flow of kilograms per second, mass flow M dot on each side. So the M dots are gonna cancel out. The H's are not gonna cancel out because an, an enthalpy changes as it gives up some energy to spin that shaft. Enthalpy changes. Potential energy changes because there's a difference in height between the inlet and the outlet. Kinetic energy changes because it's actually going to slow down its, that mass slows down its velocity as it hits the turbine blades. So the enthalpy in, potential energy in, kinetic energy in, are all different than out, out, out. We have to also remember, we, we can also assume that the change in internal energy of the fluid in that system is zero. That's just because usually the internal energy of a fluid is going to change because you have done compression on it or you have done expansion or you have done, um, you've applied a bunch of heat to it. But in the case of a turbine, we're not doing these things. We're not exploiting uh, the uh uh, ideal gas laws or anything. So we're just running a fluid over a turbine to make some change, to make some blades spin. So the change in our internal energy would be equal zero. So if I put those both to one side, I essentially cross them out. I said that there's no heat energy in and no work energy in. That would be weird. So then if I rearrange this equation and I get this, I put the H's to one side and the and the potential energies to one side, H is to one side, potential energies to one side, kinetic energies to one side. And that equals me my heat losses and the amount of work that I actually want to do in this turbine. That's the whole point. Then I, I get to here in my first law energy balance. And then I should sub in what, what potential energy is. I sub in what potential energy is. Of course, it's MGH. I sub in what kinetic energy is, one half mv squared. But there's m's in both of those terms, so all of the m's cross out. So our equation for a turbine then, for a first law energy balance of a turbine then, our equation ends up being heat energy out minus the work energy out is equal to the sum of the change 
and equal to the change in enthalpy and the change in gravitational potential and the change in kinetic energy that went through that turbine. That's how a turbine works. And you can drive that easily just from a first law energy balance.